Hi, it's Jo from Minerva. Today we're going to take a look at how to measure yourself and how to select the size from the pattern that you would like to make. It's important when you pick up a pattern and you look at the front cover and you think, wow, I want to make that dress, that you get the right sizing for you. So the first thing you need to do is not choose your UK size or your US size or your European size, if that's the size you buy from shops, but you need to measure yourself. This is particularly important if you're switching between pattern designers. So if you choose indie patterns sometimes and big four patterns sometimes and you're not totally loyal to one, design house brand, then you'll definitely need to measure yourself every time. There's also an element of ease in some patterns. So some patterns have a fitted shape, some patterns have a wider shape with more ease. So you'll need to compare your measurements to the finished garment measurements if those are provided. Let's get started. To show you some of the pitfalls of measuring yourself, I'm gonna measure myself for two different patterns today. So I'm going to measure myself for the chalk and notch fara dress which has quite a bit of ease in, and that's an indie pattern. And I'm also going to measure myself for New Look 6526, which is a fitted dress with much less ease in, and that's from one of the big pattern houses. First thing I'm going to do is to measure my waist. So I've got a tape measure that has centimetres on one side, and inches on the other side. I'm going to go for inches just because I'm not wearing my glasses so I can see better. So when I measure my waist which is where my leggings finish, so my leggings finish here and that's my waist, that's my narrowest part between here and here and it is 34 inches. So I'm going to write that down and keep measuring myself and then I can compare to the back of the pattern sizes. Next, I'm going to measure my hips, and that is the widest part before my legs start to taper back in again. So up here would be a false measurement, even if you believe that to be your hips, because that's where your hip bone is. Your widest part is round your bottom and round the widest part of your thighs. So I'm going to write that down. And I'm also going to measure my bust along the widest part where I would need the pattern to be at its widest. And I'm going to try and keep the tape measure as level as possible because I don't want it to be dipping down and I don't want it to fall up into here, which is my high bust. So this is your bust measurement, the fullest part of your bust. That is 37. Some patterns call for a high bust measurement, and if you don't know what that is, that is when you measure above your bust, so that'll be sort of under your armpits along here. And it's tricky because if you hold your arms up, you can get quite a small measurement, but if you put your arms down and relax your shoulder blades into the tape measure, you'll get a more comfy fit. You should be able to move the tape measure around, it shouldn't be tight. A high bust measurement is often taken if a pattern has different cup sizes. So you would take your high bust measurement, take your full bust measurement and find the difference here. And there'll be a calculation in the pattern for you to work out whether you need to cut out pattern pieces for a different cup size. So when I take a look at my measurements and I check them out on the back of the indie pattern, which is the chalk and notch pattern, I am in a size 12. For a high bust, a size 12 for a full bust, so I don't need to make um, a bust or cup size adjustment. My waist is in a size 16 and my hips are in a size 14. So you can see I've got a huge range there, so I don't immediately know which pattern pieces to cut out or which pattern size to cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about the design of the dress. I'm going to think about which bits are the most important. So I definitely need it to go across my hips. So I'm pretty tied by the hip measurement, but I don't want it to be too tight round. If I go for the hip measurement, I don't want to be too tight round the waist. And I actually need it to be quite loose fitting to achieve the ruffles around the shoulders. 
So when I look at the pattern, I'm going to cut out a size 14 because I definitely want it to go around my hips because to me that's the most important part of this dress so that I can sit down. I've got some ease for sitting down and standing up. I'm going to do what's called grading out. So I'm going to grade out to the larger waist and then I'm going to grade back in for a bust measurement. So in a different size, in a 12, maybe even go to a 14 so that I get a really nice loose ruffles around the top and it's not tight for summer. I'm going to show you how to grade out a pattern, but right now I'm going to show you my measurements compared to a big four pattern on the new look dress. The writing's a little bit smaller on this one, so I've um, written it out on a piece of paper, but my bust landed in size 12. My waist didn't even land on this pattern. So the waist size for size 18 is a 32 waist and my waist goes to 34. So 18 isn't big enough for my waist on this pattern. And considering it's got a waistband where the sash goes, that's a really important feature. And my hip is in the size 18 as well, which is a 42. So you can see I've got quite a range there. What that's telling me is I can't just cut a 14. If I'm going from a 12 to a 14, that's a really big difference. And I might be changing the design of the dress somewhat if I grade out from a 12 out to an 18. So my answer for this measurement on this pattern is to make a 12. And I'll be showing you that in another video. I still haven't completely decided which size I'm going to cut out of the Farrah dress. I'm going to have a look at the finished measurements because this will tell me um, what the ease of the dress will be like and what the finished measurements would be like because I don't want to cut a, a very big size to fit my hips in if there's already a lot of ease in because there'll be a little room for me there anyway. So when I transferred my measurements onto the finished garment measurements, then I realised I was all in the site my body measurements would fit within size 12 so my bust measurement was 38 and the finished bust is 43 so I've got plenty of these there on the waist my waist is 34 inches and the waist ease on this would bring the finished garment out to 43.5 and the hips which was the one I was most concerned about is 42 inches and the finished measurements on the dress are 47.5. So I don't need to grade out. If I graded out, I'd have a really, really big dress. I'd be getting from my 34, 42 waist, I would be getting much, much, much more look as I move up into the sizes. So if you can compare your measurements to the finished garment measurements. On the new look 6526, to make this view which is what I would like to make there isn't fit any finished garment measurements so I'm going to definitely make a toile of the top part of this bodice because my waist measurement is going to be quite critical on that waistband there hips not so much because it's a full skirt so I'm not worrying about hip measurement there it's the waist one I'm most concerned about when I've measured myself for this pattern what if the pattern has some ease I've been using the word ease, um, which if you're not sure about, means how much fitting room is already built into the pattern for ease of movement. And it will be very much linked to the fabric that they've suggested for the pattern. So if you've got a jersey pattern, it will quite often be in negative ease, which means it will stretch around your arm because it's a stretchy fabric. You find fitted garments are in wovens and you will find fitted garments um, in stretch as well but you need to look in the pattern instructions at the beginning maybe the bit that you skip that tells you if the pattern is got negative ease it's fitted or it has positive ease i'll show you a few examples of what that means when you actually see it in garments so so this is the true bias rio ringer t-shirt it is a fitted garment so it fits the body it fits the body here it's not stretched around my arms it's uh, fitted to my arms. So I've not got a sort of T-shirt shape. I've got a fitted sleeve, a very fitted neck and a very fitted bodice. So this is a long sleeve top. 
um, this is actually a ready to wear one but it's similar to the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons this top it has negative ease so if I held this top up to me it would look too small but because it's in jersey then it's stretching across me so it's it's a negative smaller size than my actual body size so this is positive ease this is the Nora loose fitting boxy sweatshirt top so you'll get lots more ease in the sleeve you'll get lots more ease around the bottom so you'll get much more of a boxy fit so here you need to definitely compare your measurements to the measurements on the pattern because otherwise you'll end up with a top that's way too big if you overestimate what size you need in the first place if you're getting really close with your measurements against the pattern measurements then it's a good idea to go ahead and do your cutting and tack your seams together before you um, sew them and then you can try on and make little tiny adjustments. You don't want to be making huge adjustments because some of those things um, like a sloping shoulder or a swaying back or um, a sort of bigger arm psych here, all of those things you'll need to have a little bit more knowledge of. But if you just want to take a little nip in in different places and grade out between sizes, I'll show you how to do that at the cutting table. Sometimes you can just make a small adjustment without changing uh, the pattern too much. So for example, when I made the Jane Pinafore, when I saw the models on the photograph, it looked really, really straight. So when I sewed the side seam, I just um, measured from the bottom of the armhole to my waist, put a little mark where my waist was, and I just graded in a little bit when I sewed that seam and it just gave the dress a little bit more shape. Okay, if I want to grade out, which means I would like to change this line here. So this is the top piece of a Carnaby dress by Nina Lee. And just for example, it's this wouldn't be for me, but just for example, I'd like to take in some of the waist. So if I measured myself and I would like to take it in by two centimetres, then I have to think, well, how many seams will there be? So there'll be uh, one piece of fabric here, one on the reverse. Then there will be one piece of fabric here and one on the reverse. So if I want to change this and take it in by two centimetres, then I need to take in half a centimetre off the waist because that would take half a centimetre here and half a centimetre there. So that's one centimetre off one side of my body and then half a centimetre and half a centimetre, that's one centimetre on the other side of my body. Don't make the mistake of taking off two centimetres off this side because that would mean you were taking off two, four, six, eight centimetres in total. So whatever you're taking off or indeed adding on, you need to split it by the amount of seams that you've got. So you're putting a little bit on every seam. So if I wanted to grade this waist out in a little bit, I would then join it back up with the main seam line. So then I would cut my fabric in and back out. If I wanted to add some onto the hip, then it's the same but in reverse. So say I wanted to add two centimetres, then I would take this seam line out by half a centimetre. So you can grade between sizes, just keep it smooth. Make sure that um, if it's the waist you want to take in, you're not just taking the pattern waist in, you're actually taking where your waist will land. And also the same for the hip. And you can also do some other alterations for busts and shoulders, which I will show in a different video. But this is just a simple, take some in, add a little bit on, and you can make those little changes by grading in or out on a pattern. Of course, if you take some um, in, you'll probably be okay for the next piece that joins on. If you add a little bit on, so if I added five centimetres up, 0.5 centimetres onto there, then the next piece would have to be uh, the same length so that it fit on. So don't cut quickly if you're making alterations, double check each thing 
use the notches to check that where you've taken in some on one um, the notch matches and you're taking it in or out in the same place. So those are some very basic steps for measuring yourself. Obviously I've measured the top half. If you were um, measuring trousers then you'd need your inseam measurement. You would need um, a crotch measurement but we can have a look at those in another video. If you're interested leave a comment below and we can try and show uh, fitting tutorials that help you along in your sewing journey. Of course the best place to find out about fit is to scroll through and have a look at Minerva Makers. You get a lot of information about how much ease is in a pattern, whether a pattern needed lots of alterations if people sewed it straight from the packet. It's very difficult when you're having patterns from Europe and America and Canada and uh, the UK to set yourself one size. You can't set yourself I am one size because you will probably get caught out. You really need to measure yourself and compare yourself against the pattern. I hope the tips from today will help you get a better fit on your clothes. If you have any questions please leave those below and if you've got any requests please put those below as well. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.